Greetings goblins, today we're talking about what to steal from the Black Sword Hack. Greetings and welcome to Elder Goblin Games, the universalist TTRPG channel where the DCs are made up and the stats don't matter. So there are three different things I'd like to steal from this book. While it's a great game on its own and deserves to be played, maybe this isn't your top RPG of choice, but you want to know what's cool about it. Well, that's what this video is for. Here's some things to add to your game or reasons to play this one. There is no truth but that of eternal struggle. I should add that this is the Black Sword Hack Ultimate Chaos Edition, just in case anyone's wondering. Black Sword Hack is an old school OSR feeling game, and there are plenty of reasons to play it or try it out, including its amazing art direction. It's probably not the first game to go over this, but it talks about doing things in turns. That way everyone has an opportunity to act and nobody gets left out of the action. We have now staples like advantage and disadvantage, but the first role I wanna focus on stealing today is the usage die. Some things in the game are represented by a usage die, UD, to model the fact that they are available in limited quantities. In Black Sword Hack, we like to use this mechanic to represent mostly abstract resources, such as influence, debts, etc. The usage die should be seen as a push your luck mechanic, it can grant you some advantages, but it can also blow up in your face at the worst possible moment. Some games use this mechanic to manage concrete resources like rations or arrows. Not so in Black Sword Hack. Counting 20 arrows is not rocket science, nor is recording the use of a week's worth of rations. A usage die should represent something important, not the content of one's backpack. When a resource is used, you roll its usage die, a result of one or two, means the usage die is downgraded to the next smallest die. D20 to D12, D10 to D8, D6 to D4. When you roll a 1 or 2 on a UD4, the resource is depleted. As a guide, the average number of uses until a die is depleted for each UD, and then they have a scale here. So I love this as a basic mechanic to the game, and really this could be used in any game. I really like the example that they have here in the book. And though it states that it's not necessarily for things like arrows or rations, I don't mind using it for something like rations if travel is not at the forefront of the game. Let's look at the example. Whoop. During the campaign, the GM thinks that an NPC, a mercenary, owes a debt to one of the player characters who saved their life. The GM decides to represent this debt as a D6 usage die. What does this mean? Each time the PC asks the mercenary for help, they roll the debt UD. Once the die is depleted, the mercenary will consider their debt paid and will no longer help the character for free. The usage die has near endless possibilities of uses. <laughs> Everything from tracking influence to abstracting distances. It can be used as a sort of timer for tense situations. I'm sure your mind is already racing with the ideas that this might add to your campaign. So that's just number one. Now I am cheating a little bit because number two is doom which is another version of a usage die. So let's look at Doom. Whoop. Doom. Once they decide to go adventuring, the character brings the attention of law and chaos on themselves. This is represented by the Doom die. Each time a character goes beyond their limits and tempts fate, they must roll their Doom die. The forces of law and chaos can and will turn the tide one way or another. The Doom die is a usage die. When it is depleted, the character has brought Doom upon themselves. In game terms, the Doom die is usually rolled when a character takes the same action twice during a combat turn, roll before making the test, uses a gift, which is kind of like magic or feats in this game, gets a critical failure on an attribute test. The Doom die returns to its maximum after the character has taken a long rest. Players can choose to call on Doom, roll Doom and subtract the result from an attribute test. The Doom die is automatically downgraded without rolling. No Doom die anymore, you can't use actions requiring you roll it. Once the Doom die is depleted, the character is considered doomed. All their attribute tests and damage rolls are made with disadvantage until the character can take a long rest. Now another way to think of using this Doom die is for things like feats and magic abilities. If you have a game that has limited options for characters, like something like a Knave or a Cairn, and you want to add a simple way to use spells or abilities or something like a meta currency, Doom can be perfect for that. Players can call on their Doom to add or subtract from a roll, 
but then it downgrades their Doom Die one size. They could also use it to fuel those spells and abilities. That's just one thing that really sets Black Sword Hack apart from other OSR style games for me. I really like the gifts that are in this book. There are really interesting abilities that you can add to any character to give them a little bit extra flavor or something extra to do. Okay, so I keep talking about the idea of gifts that are in this book. So let's take a look at some of them. Each gift can only be taken once. Gifts can come from the powers of balance, chaos, or law. A time may come when these choices affect your character. The GM will find more information about this in the end game section. We can check that out in a minute. So one thing that I really like about gifts in this game is it can give some extra oomph to a character who's done a feat of great renown or something to earn the boon or favor of a powerful being or god. Gifts are special little abilities that are fueled by your doom die. Let's just look at a few of them. Gifts of Balance, Fortress of the Mind. Get advantage on your attribute tests when resisting spells. Second Win, regain a number of HP equal to your level once per day, even in combat. Gifts of Chaos, Bloodlust, upgrade your damage die by one size. Riddle of Steel, one of your weapons now inflicts D12 damage, but if you roll a one on its damage roll, it breaks. If you're playing an old school game, like Old School Essentials, even Shadow Dark, gifts can be a great way to add a boon for a character, or receive an extra ability for completing a quest, praying to a statue of a dark god, praying to a statue of their own god, praying to a statue of a god of their choice, etc, etc. Dark packs and other vileness. Bum, bum, bum. As mentioned before, here's the section on the end game. It talks about balance between law and chaos and forces outside of the character's control. Okay, that's it for today. There are tons of other things you could steal from Black Sword Hack, but I say, why not just try it out for yourself? Maybe do a couple of one-shots that you string together or a short campaign arc. It's well worth your time investment. It's not a huge book and it's got lots of interesting things going on, including the style, the lore, and the way it really ties Dark Sword and Sorcery together. It's one of those games that you really need to experience for yourself. Before we go, I'm going to read the quote at the end of the book. If life is illusion, then I am no less an illusion. And being thus, the illusion is real to me. I live, I burn with life, I love, I slay, and am content. Robert E. Howard, Queen of the Black Coast. All right, goblins. Thanks for listening. It was a bit of a short one, but I just really wanted to highlight Black Sword Hack. I think it's worth your time, money, and worth bringing to your attention. Hopefully you enjoy it. That's it for today, but as always, remember, make mistakes, choose chaos, and most importantly, have fun. I have scoured to the heart of the archives deep and travel to the top of the cinder cloud peaks and forded the ever plains for the answers I see so beware of the realms where you meddle for the fates can be fickle when the dice settles